In lab two of our Tinkercad Circuits Lab series, we are going to learn how to use a multimeter to measure voltage, current, and resistance. This video is going to assume you already know how to use a breadboard. We covered that in the first video in this series. So if you don't know how to do that yet, make sure you go check out the first video linked in the description, which is going to be part of a playlist of this Tinkercad Lab series, which as a reminder, is a companion series to my introduction to circuits playlist, where we are looking at circuit diagrams and the theory and equations behind the circuits, but we aren't building them physically on a breadboard. That is what we are doing here in Tinkercad Circuits, which is a free online circuit simulator that lets you build circuits in breadboard views. So again, if you are missing the introduction and coming into the playlist on this second video, make sure you go back and check out the first video if you need that orientation. So our objective for this video is to show how you would use a multimeter to measure the three main things that you might be asked to measure in an introductory electronics lab, voltage, current, and resistance. So this is not an intro physics series. I'm not going to explain the units like volts, amps, and ohms. I'm kind of assuming you already have that background. Again, go check out my intro circuit theory playlist if you need a little bit more of that. We are going to jump right into assuming you have some circuit like this with some LEDs on a breadboard connected to a battery with some current limiting resistors. And if I hit start simulation, then Tinkercad is going to show that this LED lights up. This one does not because it is not connected in series with that resistor there. So if I move that over and hit start simulation again, both of my LEDs light up. Great. So I have a visual indicator that I have closed circuits, my LEDs are lighting up, my circuit is working, but I would like some measurements of this circuit. For example, I would like to know exactly how much current is flowing through each LED, or I would like to know the voltage drop across the LED or one of the resistors. And a multimeter is the tool that is going to allow me to measure that. Kind of like with physical measurements, you have something like a ruler, a multimeter gives us some insight into the world of electronics because we can't really see electricity moving around or hear it like we can with sound. It's just kind of this invisible thing that's hard for humans to perceive. And again, the multimeter is the tool that's going to let us measure those different electrical quantities. So in Tinkercad, over here on the parts palette down at the bottom, we have a multimeter. So if I drag that out, it is going to give me a very simple multimeter, multimeter, excuse me, that just have three has three buttons, A, V, and R. So that's for amps for current, volts for voltage, and R for resistance. A little inconsistent how it doesn't use I for current there, but and ohms, omega for ohms. So again, we're not getting into the units and variables in this um, video. But point being, these buttons are a little different from what you might see on a physical multimeter which many times is going to have a dial with way more settings than this. A real-world multimeter isn't just going to have three buttons on it, one for each of these settings. Even an auto-ranging multimeter is probably going to have more buttons. So in Tinkercad, this is a greatly simplified multimeter interface, but it is still very useful for learning how to hook a multimeter up to a breadboard and how to connect, correctly connect the probes either in series or parallel, depending on what you are measuring, which is very important because if you get that wrong, you are not going to get a correct measurement. So the first thing we are going to demonstrate here is how to use a multimeter to measure resistance, because that is probably the simplest thing, because to measure resistance, you just take your resistor while it is not connected to the circuit. So this is important. If you want to check the resistance of a resistor that is already in the circuit, you need to take it out first, and you are going to connect the two multimeter leads directly to the two leads of the resistor. You don't want to try to measure the resistance of things while they are in a powered circuit. So to do that in Tinkercad, I am going to just click on the leads of my multimeter and then click on the leads of my resistor. I'm going to use my color coding here, change that wire to red to indicate positive, although the color of the wire does not affect the functionality at all. That would work just fine if I left that wire black, but with a real physical multimeter, you're probably going to have one red probe and one black probe. So again, to measure the resistance of a resistor, multimeter probes directly to either side of the resistor. Resistors do not have polarity, so it does not matter if I switch these. 
I could go like that and I'm going to get the same reading. And when I hit start simulation in Tinkercad, you see the multimeter defaults to V for voltage, which is just gonna read zero across this resistor because there is no power supply connected. But if I switch to R for resistance, it is going to give me the resistance reading of that resistor, which in Tinkercad is perfect because there is no tolerance on the resistor. So real world resistors have a tolerance range on them. Typically plus or minus 5% is the most common. So if you pull out a one kilo ohm resistor in the real world and go to measure it, you're probably not gonna get exactly 1.00 kilo ohms. You're gonna get 9.99 or 1.01 .01 or something close to one kilo ohm, but not exactly, which is where measuring the resistance with the multimeter comes in handy, because if you need to know the exact value of the resistor, you cannot assume that it is exactly equal to that nominal value. You are going to need a multimeter to check the other reason this can be handy is reading these little color-coded bars on the resistor can be difficult, especially sometimes colors that are close to each other. It can be hard to tell the difference between red and orange or something like that. So you might have a resistor kit with an assortment of these and you think you have read the color code correctly, which is really a topic for another video, but it is good to use the multimeter just as a sanity check to double check that again, that you have the right resistor value and you're not off by a factor of 10 or a thousand or something depending on especially the value of that third band which represents the power of 10. Okay so that's it for measuring resistance again mostly useful for checking the value of a resistor. Now let's talk about measuring voltage and you are going to hear language for measuring voltage can be a little confusing people might say voltage drop or voltage across or voltage over the important thing to remember is that voltage is always measured between two points in a circuit. And if you want to measure the voltage across or over, whatever you want to call it, a specific component in the circuit, you need to connect the multimeter in parallel to the thing you want to measure. And I talked a little bit in the last video about how it's important not to get mixed up. This is a beginner mistake I see a lot of students make do not get electrically in parallel mixed up with physically or geometrically in parallel. The two are not related. It can be a coincidence that in some circuit diagrams, things wind up looking geometrically in parallel. For example, these two branches with the LED and the resistor are electrically in parallel to each other. And if I go over here to the schematic view in Tinkercad, we can see that it didn't really line them up physically in parallel, right? If I had just chosen to draw this circuit by hand myself, this isn't necessarily how I would have drawn it, and I would have drawn the branches also physically in parallel, but what Tinkercad did here is electrically equivalent, even though these branches do not appear physically in parallel. Again, they are electrically in parallel. So we're gonna go back over to our breadboard diagram here, and I am gonna give you an assignment or challenge to pause the video and try to connect the multimeter leads to measure the voltage drop across the red LED. So I'm assuming at this point you have built this circuit with the LEDs on the breadboard. If you haven't done that yet, you can pause the video and duplicate that first. And then without me showing you how, again, go ahead and pause the video and try to connect the multimeter leads to measure the voltage drop across the red LED. Okay, so hopefully you have paused the video and tried this yourself. Remember, you do need to hit Start Simulation in Tinkercad and then select the V for Voltage button there to actually get the voltage displayed. But rather than showing you how to do it right away, I'm gonna show you two things that I see go wrong the first time I ask students to do this. And the first is students will do something like this. They will connect their two multimeter leads like that. I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna turn this one to black to be consistent for my positive negative. Hit Start Simulation and go, Okay, remember to switch to volts, not resistance. Why don't I have or a voltage across my LED? Why am I reading zero volts? Okay, my LED is on, so I know there has to be some voltage, and it looks like I connected my leads in parallel, so why am I reading zero volts across the LED? And that goes back to remembering how a breadboard works and how the holes are connected. So the holes are connected across these rows. It is very convenient how Tinkercad highlights the holes that are connected here. But even though I have put my multimeter leads, what looks like physically in parallel to my LED here on each side of the LED, remember that is not necessarily the same as electrically in parallel. These adjacent rows are not connected to each other. So there is 
no electrical connection between my two multimeter leads and the leads of this LED. I am just measuring nothing. These two rows are empty, and that is why I am measuring zero volts. So to measure a voltage across my LED, I need to move my multimeter leads down to the same row as the LED leads. So in Tinkercad, to move things around, I have to hit Stop Simulation. I'm going to click and move my two multimeter leads down to the same row. And that leads to the next question I get from students most often when they do this. Why is my voltage negative? My LED is on, but I don't think current is flowing backwards or none of my battery hooked up backwards or anything weird. Why is my voltage that I'm measuring negative? And remember that voltage is measured between two points, but voltage has a sign convention to it. It's measured relative to wherever you have the ground or blackly connected, and that is considered zero. So it's kind of like elevation, you could say. If you define sea level as zero, then anything above that is gonna be positive, anything below that is gonna be negative. So again, I basically just have my sign convention reversed here with the way I have connected these two leads. So if I stop the simulation and reverse the leads, put the positive lead on the positive side of the LED, which you can see is connected to the positive side of the battery, and then whoops, move the negative multimeter lead over to the negative side of the LED, start my simulation again, now I'm gonna get a positive number. So again, that is always going to apply when you are measuring voltage if you get a negative number, which depending on the circuit, in some cases could be correct or what you're trying to measure, but usually with a basic circuit like this with a resistor and an LED in series, when we talk about the voltage drop or the voltage over a component, we're expecting to measure a positive number. So if you get a negative, then you just need to switch the positive and negative leads of the multimeter. So as an exercise for the viewer, you could also try to connect the multimeter to measure the voltage of the battery or the voltage drop across one of the resistors in this circuit. I am not going to demonstrate that for you. Again, I will leave it as a challenge for you to figure out based on how we have demonstrated measuring the voltage across this LED here. The next thing I am going to ask you to do is to connect the multimeter, so delete the two leads you had there to measure voltage, and connect it to measure the current through the LED. If you know about circuits in series, then you will probably realize that the current through the LED, through the red LED, sorry, must be the same as the current through this resistor since they are connected in series. You could say the same thing about the blue LED and this resistor. So again, you, I don't wanna give it away yet, but might think about how you need to connect the multimeter to measure current through a component. Go ahead and pause the video Give that a shot, and then after the break, I will show you how to do it. Okay, hopefully you tried that yourself before you just kept watching to see me do it. But again, rather than showing you how to do it right away, I'm going to show you one of the most common mistakes I see students make when asked to do this, which is probably even more common than the mistake I see when measuring voltage. And that is, assuming you have a circuit wired something like this with an LED in series with a resistor, to connect the multimeter probes like this. And I'm gonna turn that one red, start my simulation and change the multimeter to amps, and then say, hey, why am I getting zero amps? My LED is on, so I know the current can't be zero, and I connected my multimeter in series, so it should be measuring current, but my multimeter is measuring zero. And again, this goes back to understanding how a breadboard works. I have connected both of these multimeter probes to the same row. So these probes are connected directly to each other, effectively short-circuiting the probes. There is no reason for current to flow through them because current can just flow from the LED through this row in the breadboard directly to the resistor and the ground. And if I switch over to the circuit diagram, unfortunately Tinkercad doesn't actually add the multimeter in here to the circuit diagram. But again, if I were to draw it in the circuit diagram, I would wanna see a little ammeter symbol inserted in series with the LED here, which means I actually need to break the circuit to insert a new component there. And the same thing applies when building this circuit on a breadboard. If you want to measure current, 
you need to break the circuit. And if you were paying attention back at the very beginning of the video when I had to move this resistor, you may have noticed that that's what I was doing there. So right now, current is not forced to flow through the multimeter at all. Attaching these two leads in this row just short circuits them together and the meter doesn't really do anything. Instead, if I move this resistor down a row, so right now if I run the simulation, the LED isn't gonna turn on and I'm gonna read zero amps because I have an open circuit here. The LED is not connected to the resistor. But if I then also move my multimeter lead down a row, and I'm gonna do this with the red lead first and you'll see why in a second, and now hit start simulation, now I get a non-zero reading because in order to have a closed circuit, current must flow through the multimeter. It goes through the LED, into the black lead of the multimeter, through the meter, out through the red lead, and then through the resistor. And you can see that, again, I have a negative reading because of how I have the black and red leads connected. I have the black lead connected on the positive side, or I have current flowing into the black lead talking about conventional current and sign convention is again a topic for another video I have covered in my intro circuit theory playlist. So if you're thinking, wait a minute, electrons are moving the other way, what are you talking about? Again, have that covered in a different video. Point being, if I switch these, so I have the red lead there and the black lead here, then I'm getting a positive number, which is what I expect for, expect for current. So again, current is flowing through the LED into the red lead, into the meter, which is gonna give me a positive number, out the black lead, and into the resistor. So again, in order to do that, I had to rearrange the circuit. I had to move the resistor. So I initially have an open circuit and did not have the LED on at all. No current was flowing. And then I had to insert the multimeter in series between the LED and the resistor in order to get the current measurement. And again, since current is the same in series, I could do that anywhere. So instead of putting the multimeter in series between the resistor and the LED. For example, I can move this jumper wire up here and say I'm gonna move my multimeter leads over here, where again, now I have a path from that jumper wire into the positive lead of the meter, out through the negative lead to the LED, and I'm gonna get the same current reading because again, I am in series just on the other side of the LED. So with that, we have now covered how to use a multimeter to measure voltage, current, and resistance, particularly when connecting it to measure a circuit built on a breadboard and some of the common mistakes and pitfalls students encounter when first doing that. Again, the big caveat here is that a real multimeter is likely going to be more complicated than the one in Tinkercad and have more than three buttons on it. So what exactly to do with all those buttons or dial settings? is covered in a separate video. I have a different multimeter tutorial on my channel, which again, you can find linked in the description, but I will be continuing to add to this Tinkercad Circuit Lab playlist with more components, again, corresponding to the Intro Circuit Theory playlist, which you can find linked in the description. So be sure to come back and check out the rest of the videos. Thank you.